Hello, Jackson Elementary. It's your art teacher here. I thought I'd help all of us out by showing you guys how I like to make videos. I know that some of us have been struggling with making videos and posting it on our Google Classrooms. I know I had a parent that is also a teacher at a different elementary school. She reached out wondering how I made my videos that I put on our classrooms. So I thought I'd share my knowledge with you guys. Now, I do not like to use Google Meet for recording my videos because most of the time I use my hands because I'm showing what we're doing for art. And if I do record my hands, I'm using my phone. I have it up on a tripod. So I have never used the camera on here, but if I did, I would just type in the camera application down in the search bar and you record yourself like that. The problem that I have with Google Meet is that you're on an online platform and when you record on there, it's already compressed because it's on an online platform and it can only have so much quality. Then when it gets done, it downloads itself and uploads itself to your Google Drive. Then it compresses it even more and the video looks more and more grainy. It's hard to tell what's going on, especially if you are showing words or writing something or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So that's why I like to use my phone. Another problem I also see is that whenever somebody makes a video with Google Meet, especially if it's a little longer, it takes a very, very long time for it to upload to your drive. I know the parent that reached out to me, she said that she made a video last night and it still wasn't done uploading by the morning. So I don't know if it's just her internet, I don't know if it's just her computer, but I thought I would share the process that I do that doesn't take nearly that long. So I recorded a silly little test video on my cell phone I've got my cell phone plugged into my computer with my charging cord. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what application I use. I did not download anything. I did not pay for anything. I'm just using the built-in photos application. Now I know that sounds weird using a photos application, but I'm going to go ahead and launch this. These are, you know, random photos and videos and stuff that I've done in the past, but you can go up here and click on new video. This is where I edit all the videos. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click on new project and go ahead and type in whatever the name of your video is going to be. And I'm going to open up my, uh, my files and I have my phone plugged in right here. Double click on that. Now, if you're wondering where you can find the information of where it's going to be at, so like when I open this, you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, where is it? So if you go to whatever video you're wanting to edit or a photo you're wanting to add to your video, you can just go ahead and I, I have a Android a phone, but if you have an Apple phone, I'm sure you could find the same information somewhere. But if I just swipe up from the bottom, it tells me like the day and location that I took it at. And if I scroll down just a little bit more, it tells me the details. And on the details, it says that it's in my storage. So I clicked on my SD card and then it says it's in DCIM and then in camera, and then it says a bunch of numbers at the end. So these are, I think these are like the dates right here and then the file numbers at the end. So my file number, I know I don't really have to look for it because it's the most recent thing I made. If I just scroll all the way to the bottom, I can find my video right here. All I have to do is tap on it, hold on it, and then drag it and drop it into my library. Go ahead and get rid of this. If you have a longer video, it's going to take a lot longer to add to this. Now, I just have the one video. If you want to add more pictures and different video clips that you've made, they just all go right in here. Then you can either, when you have it selected, you can just place into your storyboard or you can just drag it and drop it. Now, I made a silly little video of me feeding my cat some treats and I have a section in the middle that I need to cut out right about, right about here. That's where I put my phone down to be able to open up the treat bag. So this part I need to cut out. So what I'm going to do is not just hit trim. If I hit trim, I can only take the beginning and the ends off. If I were to take all of this out, it's going to take the whole second half of my video away. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to split my video. So now that one clip that I have is going to make two. And here's one clip and here's the other. So I'm going to find the spot where I started to put my phone now, which it looks like it's right about there. I'm going to hit play. Okay, so right there. I'm just going to back it up just a little bit. I'm going to hit these little buttons to make smaller, more refined edits. 
and then I'm going to hit done. So now you can see I've got my two clips. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my first clip and I'm going to trim this now. If you see when I play it, I've got a little bit of dead space at the beginning right there. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this that little bit. Now it's a little bit better, even though I just got rid of a half a second. And I'm going to go ahead and click done. And then I'm going to go to my other video and we get to see all that dead space that I have from putting my phone down. So if we click on this and then we hit trim, you can see this whole section that I need to cut out. So now I'm back to my video. I'm going to go back a little bit so that I don't cut off my voice. There we go. Then this little thing right down here, I'm just going to hold on to it and drag it over. And now I know that's done, but I can play it just to make sure. Sounds good to me. Just like that. Oh, I also forgot. I'm going to check the end of this also. Make sure there's no weird dead space or something like that. Oh my gosh, I keep. Okay, so like that last little bit, I don't need this. I, I knew what, there was no talking right there. Oh my gosh, just go with it. Right, go back. Speed this up. All right, so that's good right there. That's all I need. And now my video's done. If you had a much more in-depth video, if you had a bunch of clips, you would have it all up here. If you were to speed things up and slow them down, um, you're going to have different splits and so normally when I do the videos from my classroom I'm speeding things up a lot, I'm slowing things down, sometimes if I film in the classroom the fluorescent lights really make a kind of not so great cover over like color in my picture so I usually will just add a filter to it whatever it might be but I don't have to do that here I don't really care about it. Um, Um, if you wanted to add text, if you wanted to add a title card, you can do a bunch of fancy effects with these. Play around with it, figure out what you want to do. Um, I know how to use these mostly, so if any of you have questions, you can reach out to me. I'm sure there's lots of stuff on the internet. If you want me to make another video describing how to do anything with these, I totally can do that also. So now when you're all done and you're happy with your video, you're just going to go up here and hit finish video. And it will have a recommended for you. I'm just going to hit export. The longer your video is, the longer it's going to take to export. So this video is only like 40, yeah, 43 seconds. It's not going to take very long to export. And when it gets done, I'll show you guys how to upload it to YouTube. I found that uploading it to YouTube is the most easy way for my, the students to access the video so they don't have to download it and then watch the video or maybe not have it work or not work right away. So I found that making a YouTube video and then just posting it on the classroom like that is the easiest way. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my YouTube channel and I have my account right here. Now you can always go to your channel, but we don't need to do that. We can just go right here to upload video. So I'm going to go to that and it brings you right to YouTube studio once it gets there. Computer's doing a lot with trying to export. Okay, so once it gets done, it's going to go ahead and just play your video right away. And I don't need to watch it again, so I'm just going to exit it right away. So now I know that that video we just finished, it's in my videos folder, wherever that is, right here. And I'm just going to take it, drag it, and drop it. And it's going to upload it to YouTube. It's not going to be right away. Now you need to do just a couple more things. You can see it's uploading down here. So I have, I'm just going to label it test. I don't really care. So I've got that. You can just put whatever you want for the description. You can add a thumbnail if you want. Um, it will automatically choose a thumbnail from your video. But if you want to upload a photo from, I don't know, whatever you took for the video, you can do that too. And if you go down here a little bit more, if you made the video for kids, you have to click that it's for kids. And then if you wanted to add tags to it, I usually do for my art videos. So you can do art and it says right here to make a comma to make sure that it turns into a tag. So we just hit comma just like that. And then um, 
virtual learning. Whatever the tags might be. I don't know if there's a limit on it. But it's just so other people can find your video if you really want to. So once it uploads, it also has to process. And then mine's almost done. And when it does, it'll pop up with the thumbnails. So it just defaulted to this one. Um, you can choose whatever one you want or upload your own. I'll just keep it on this, I guess. Hit next. None of this is important to us. And then you just want to hit public. If you hit unlisted the video, you can watch it and then you can share the link for the video. But I found this to have some problems because when I first started making videos for my classroom, I did this so that nobody else could see them. But whenever I tried to access my account from other computers, I should have been able to see it, but it didn't work. And whatever I shared the link, it also didn't work. So I just go ahead and make mine public. You don't have to set a premiere. You don't have to set a schedule. None of that fancy stuff. Now, all I have to do is hit publish. And once it's done publishing, it pops up saying that you can share it and you can copy it if you want to. Hit close. So here's all the other videos that I've made for my classroom. If this doesn't look normal to you, it's because we're still in the YouTube studio. So if I go ahead and go to my channel, I can find the video we just made. It's right here on the front and if it's not right here on the front you can always just click on the videos and you can find it amongst all of your other ones just like that i hope this answered some of your questions or i also hope that i didn't confuse anybody else you can always go back and re-watch what i've done to help you this is the easiest way i found to do it the um, best way to get the best quality picture without having to spend a bunch of money on other equipment or programs and if you guys have any more questions, you guys can reach out to me. You can email me. You can call me. Whatever you need. Good luck, everybody. Goodbye.